Uh, good morning, my brothers and sisters. It's good to see you again, uh, to be with you today in our worship. I want to welcome you um, from wherever you are uh, you know, joining us from. We want to thank you. We want to praise God for you. Uh, We're going to have a wonderful time, uh, Dr. O and also Pastor Ron are with us as well. So uh, you will be, of course, hearing from them. Um, but we're going to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. The scripture said that is what God is looking for. So wherever you are, right there where you are, we are going to bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, before we continue, I want to see if our, our brother Ron can and again, pray for us as he did last week. Uh, Brother Ron, would you please do that for us? I would be more than happy, happy to. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we just give you glory as we gather in the name of your son. Son, Jesus. We thank you for the richness of what you're about to deposit today. We thank you for the power in the words and in the teaching. And we thank you, Lord, that lives will be transformed by it. And we thank you, Lord, that the planet, that the earth will hear, the creation will listen to the words of our mouth and the truths and the declarations and respond to the word of the Lord through the sons. And we thank you for it. And we thank you for the word that you're bringing through Pastor Benedicta and through our, our rabbi, Dr. O, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Um, I want to let you know, before we continue again, uh, that we will be having our communion uh, together, uh, I think, towards the end of our worship this morning. We want to have our communion. I I know we, you know, we got, we, we started having communion together uh, every Sunday that we come together, but I think we need to continue it because we've come to love it, you know, um, we really come to really appreciate that. So I want to give you a few minutes or maybe two minutes to really go and gather your communion and be ready so that uh, when it is time for us to, um, to uh, partake, we can all do that together. Uh, so I'll give you a little bit time. And while you are going to do that, I want to share with you the amazing things that Abba is doing in your church family, in our worship community. First, I want to share with you that our brother, um, Joshua is now home, recovering from the successful surgery that he went through. And I want to thank each one of you that, that, uh, that prayed for him and his family. And also, I mean, I, I ask you to continue to pray for him, pray for the whole family, that there'll be a speedy, speedy uh, recovering. And um, so we, we continue to see God's creative miracle happening in the life of our brother Joshua. So we give God praise, we give God glory for the big miracles, we give God thanks for the small miracles that he has shown to our brother and to our worship, uh, worship community. Also, I want to thank all of you who joined us during our, our last Wednesday. We had our community prayer. I thank you that, you know, for those of you who joined from different parts of the world, joined to pray. Um, thank you so very much. It was really powerful. We have people who prayed and it was really, really amazing. So this week, we're going to move our, our community prayer to Tuesday, which is really the, the scheduled time. And it's got a scheduled day and a time, which is also 7 o'clock. And uh, please check our website, uh, www.venisumc.com for more details, you know, and, you know, and uh, I want you also, please, please, please to like our Facebook, our, 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 our communication department, which is made up of really uh, Bianca and, and Embe, you know, they've been working so hard. So please like our Facebook, okay? Thank you. And I want to thank, um, Thank the two, thank Bianca specifically because she's been amazing making sure that you know we're able to do what we're doing at this time. And I thank God for the opportunities that we have to actually uh, be able to um, reach one another, meet with one another via this means, uh, this vehicle. So I thank you so much. Also, I want to share with you that um, uh, also, thank you first, okay, for all your giving. I thank you for your giving. I really appreciate your generosity. I also want to let you know that we have like different forms of giving right now that is available for you. Of course, one is being online, got the, our online, I, you know, click the gift tab, and then you're able to do that. You're able 
able to, you're able to give it's really easy. You know what? I want to confess. I was, I've never even used that give. And the reason why I didn't, I, I never used it was because I was always here in the church. And I, and I gave why I was here. So, but last week I was able to go online and be able to give, and it was really, really good. It was easy and fast. So, I encourage you to do that. You can give with your credit card, and, and those who can do with their PayPal, I can go ahead and do that. Also, um, you can also mail your checks if you want uh this that's also an option and also you if you have time and you're driving uh, um, around the area you can also drop in and the drop box and uh which is outside the gate of the church and another 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 method that is available for all of us is also you can also work with your bank set your um that you're given on um, with your bank and the bank will send the church the <laughs> the, uh, the you're given and you don't have to worry about um about uh, uh stamps and envelopes so you can do that that way as well so um that's our giving um uh, opportunity another thing that i'm really excited that is happening is that our we will uh, next sunday we're going to kick up um our children online ministry there are uh, there are people that have been working extremely hard to make sure that this happened i want to encourage you families i want to encourage you parents to please begin to reach out to your friends those that are, that are in your contact that have children in their homes can please begin to reach out and get them ready so we can go um you know a kick off uh, on this coming sunday uh, this past week, I've been reading the book of uh, Numbers, uh, Numbers chapter 13, all the way to 17. And um, I mean, I, I don't know want to say if I was compelled to read that, but I kept reading it over and over and I will listen to it as well. And I began to notice all the complaints, all the grumbling, all the blaming, all the finger pointing that Feel those chapters, you know, the children of Israel first they complain about the report of the um of the, the ten spies and to say that they were grasshoppers, you know, you know, there was a scary place, not to, you know, uh, um, and then they also complained. There was also a big, big complaint with Korah, uh, Dayton, and uh, and Abiram. Um they also complain, they come together and they grumbled against Moses, against Aaron, challenging them about uh, uh, the inawardiness of uh, Aaron's uh, priesthood. And again, there's another one, another big one, the whole community gathered together against Moses. They were pointing finger at Moses, it was your fault, it was your fault that all these people, who, because people died, you know, because of lack of obedience, they died. So they were pointing fingers to Moses and complaining uh, to Moses that it is your fault that these things happen. Um, then the, the Bible says there that the anger of the Lord went into, the wrath of God went into the camp. And when, when Moses noticed that the anger of the Lord has gone into the camp, the man of God now spoke to his brother Aaron and said, Aaron, I want you to go and give an offering, an incense offering in the community. The verse that stood out for me so much was uh, uh, chapter 16, Numbers chapter 16, verse 48. And it says that Aaron, I guess Aaron stood between the living and the dead. Aaron stood between the living and the dead with that incense offering and the plague stopped. So the death that was declared for the whole congregation, for the whole people, that plague that came to destroy the whole community stopped because one man stood with an incense to offer it to the Lord. So I begin to listen to my heart, listen to my soul, say, Lord, what are you saying? What are you saying in this place? I heard the voice within me telling that the sons of God, the children of God, we have to stand up at this time. We have to stand up. I, I read, um, last week we read, um, Efficient, she's telling us to stand up. But in this today, saying we have to stand up as children of God. We have to stand up between the dead and between the living. I have to stand up to stop this this uh, virus, this uh, coronavirus. So I studied a little bit more. 
I started a bit more about incense, okay? So I, st I started reading, studying, and then looking at the significance, looking at the meaning, looking at the purpose of the incense. Um, so the incense in the Hebrew word is a um, ketoret, it's a K-E-T-O-R-E-T, -E a toret. So um, one of the rabbis, uh, Maimonides, he's the one that, uh, um, that was, um, I saw, saw a quote that says that um, he said that the, the incense was used to, to subdue or to extinguish, extinguish um, the smell, the smell uh, in the temple. And that's, um, so, and that's true because um, if you remember that time that the incense, that the, the temple was actually like a, stall, uh, in a, a, stall, a slaughterhouse where all the sacrifice, uh, daily sacrifice was given. And then so incense was used to be able to subdue all this, um, all, the, all the smells that were coming up. But then I was like, yeah, after I finished reading this, it, incense, I think it means much more than, than just to stop the smell. I think it meant more. I think there's more, something more, something greater than just stopping that physical smell uh, in the air. So um, as I, I, I dig a little bit deeper, I dug a little deep, deeper, you know, um, according to the rabbinical studies, there are several things that incense does, or that there's several things that incense represents. Okay, so I'm going to list what I found, and uh, because we don't have uh, time to be able to unpack it, we don't have time to be able to unpack it today, but I'm gonna give you the, the list, okay? And then, so hopefully in the near future, um, God, God willing, will be able to unpack it. So first, the, what they said is that the, that the incense are pulling, like they're pulling, they're pulling, um, a closeness, connect, connecting or connectedness, if you may, or uniting, uniting, pulling together, uniting, closeness, relationship. The second thing I, I also found is that it, that it, that the incense is, is um, a residence, a house, a dwelling, you know, yeah, inhabit a place of, to inhabit, habitation. And the, the third thing is incense, they say, is a shield, a covering. Okay, and the fourth one is revelation. Incense is a revelation, an eye opener. And the, the, the fourth, uh, the fifth one is that incense is um, abolish, you know, abolish a nullifier, something that nullifies stuff. So before I hand this over to Dr. O and Pastor Ron, I, I want to say a few words uh, as it pertain to the first, the first point which is the, um, the bonding, the coming together, the uniting, the connecting, the unity. Um, we are told that there, are, there were seven, or no, there are 11 spies, according to, according to Jewish teaching, there are 11 spies, different spices that came together or that are grounded together to make up this, this spice that was used in the temple. Hence, we have the unity, the coming together. So we're called to offer an incense offering. We are called to offer an incense of unity. Uh, we are called to offer, at this time, we're called to offer the incense of oneness. Our incense of oneness, our incense, that incense is our words, the word that comes out of our mouth. That incense is our, our conversation that we have with one another. We have, you know, we we'll speak to uh, the leaders, or the, the conversation, what we're saying about them. Our incense is our prayer, our daily prayer, our, you know, our prayer for our nations and our country. Uh, and so Psalms, I read Psalms 141, I think verse two says, let me, uh, say to me, okay, let my prayer be before you like incense. Let my prayer, let our prayer be an incense that goes up to God on a daily basis. So my dear brothers and sisters, we must unite together as a body of Christ. We must unite together. We must stand between the dead and the living. Let, us, let the fire of God that do Dwells within us fully. Let it burn. Let it burn. Let it burn. Let it quench. Let it subdue the power of this virus that's going around the world. Whether you are an Anglican, whether you are Adventist, uh, Assemblies of God, Baptist, Catholic, Evangelical, Lutheran, Met uh, you know, Mennonite, Methodist, Presbyterian, Quaker, 
charismatic or non-charismatic, spirit field or no spirit field, you are a non-denomination or denomination. If you are meeting in your home, house churches, or in a building like we do, it doesn't really matter. We must unite together as a body. We must unite together. Jews and Gentiles must come. We must stand together. We must stand unified by the global body of Jesus Christ, together as one, together with one voice, one aim, one purpose. We must stand together, my brothers and sisters. We must stand together. Let our voice be heard. Let our voice be heard in the atmosphere. Let our voice be heard in the earth. Together, let us order, give an order, an ultimatum to this virus to leave our earth. The Bible says the heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has given to the children of Adam. He has given it to you, he's given it to me, and there's some stranger, there's some embedded. So to, together, together, let us stand in the authority that has been given to us by our Abba, by our Father. Let us stand together for humanity, stand together for our earth. And let us stand, let us stand and say no, no to the invaders, no to the intruders, no, no, no more to coronavirus. So now you ask me, uh, Pastor, how do we go about doing that? Because we are so much this isolation, we're in all in our homes. I think one way we can do that is for us individually to look within our community, check within your community and see when they are praying, when they're praying for the nation, connect with them, pray with them, uh, check your synagogue. So wherever, connect with them and pray with them. And let us raise, let us be like, you know, let us be aware of Christians all over each given given moment, each given day, raising our voice and letting the fire of God burn, to, you know, and giving an order to this virus. So this time I'm going to hand it over to Dr. O. Dr. O will give us some strategies and some guidelines to continue. So Dr. O, would you please take on there? All right. <laughs> hello. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory yes, be to the Father and to the, Father, to the Holy Spirit. We give praise and glory to him who was and is and ever shall come. There should be a prayer on your screen, and Bianca is going to put it on now. And we're all going to pray it together. And then I want to talk to you about, about some things. I've been teaching for so probably five years now, four years. Uh, Bianca, can you put the prayer on? All right. So, because we need to pray this prayer together, wherever you are, we need to read this together. O Yeshua, overpowering death and sickness, who won the victory, the war set against us. You came with power to pay the debt we owed. We rejoice in your supreme and uncommon victory. You are the doer of mighty works, creator of the sun, moon, and stars framer of galaxies and world, who feeds us with the bread of life, which is your body, and gives us your life's blood that we may have the life of God. We have life more abundantly. You cause the immortal life of God to swallow our mortality. We give you thanks. O immortal one who has brought immortality to light in us, cause your strength to flow to us, by your strength, pierce the artificial veil of darkness and cause your river of light and life to cascade into your creation. Beautiful, radiant one, heaven's brilliance, save your God who opened the grave for the dead to come to life. We raise our hymns of praise to you. We praise your mighty strength. We worship your holiness. We declare your renown. Through your body and your blood, through your death and your resurrection, we forge forward to victory. Your victory moves us now to greater victory. We are overcomers through you. We are more than conquerors by your blood, by the blood and the word. We decree health to the earth. We decree life to humanity. We decree healing to humanity. We as sons of God, as inheritors of all that you are, 
command the earth to return to health and life to your glory. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to put this in your whatever you do and just use it to decree health to creation, to the earth, to everything around you. You know, remember our mode of movement is not speaking to code to COVID-19. We are speaking healing into the atmosphere. Our conversation is not about it. We know it's there. Our conversation is about life. Okay. Pastor just talked about the incense in the Jewish temple. That incense that was in the temple, that incense that was in the temple was meant, as she has just pointed out to you, to create a, a, an idea of the unification of divinity. I love what she said there. So now let's, let's, let's then talk about what it is that we need to remember. Number one, we need to remember that isolation is not really for you an isolation. That isolation doesn't take away from your interconnectivity as the body of Christ. There is a fundamental interconnectivity as the body of Christ. You're connected to everyone who names the name of Christ in truth. There's a level in which you're connected to humanity. There's another level in which you're connected specifically to those who are members of the body of Christ. There's a level in which you're connected to creation. You know, you're connected to the earth, excuse me. And, there, and in there, your very nature informs the earth. There's a level in which you are, you are connected to this Milky Way, this our own solar system. There is a, and there's a level to which you're connected to all the galaxies. Why? Because remember how God created man. Man is the only creature that all of creation participated in creating. And the reason God created you that way is to make sure that from your physical being, from your soul in your body, from his presence in your being, in your body, you can affect all of creation. So this is about how, you, how we manage ourselves as the body of Christ. This is about how we, 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 we tune the sound of our being in this time. Okay? Now, please remember that you have a fundamental interconnectivity, even though you are in your house. There are, I, I said that before, but then you're also seated with Christ in heavenly places. That means everywhere, including the worlds that have not yet been revealed, your presence is known. So we're going to come back, what do I do then? But also remember, that you are one with Christ. He, <laughs> you know, he says, says, says that we are, we are one with the Spirit. We are united with the Spirit. We are new creatures in Christ. So we have, this is a moment for us to really come to terms with who we are in Christ, who we are as purchased, redeemed, sanctified, and raised. Christ lives in us. The spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead lives in us. Don't forget that. And it is from there that you're operating. What is this thing? What is it attacking? It's attacking your body. What is it trying to do? In order to attack the body, it must, it must distort the frequency of the body and it must distort the processes that God has created and try to cut it short. Whatever it is, it's attacking the body that was meant to be the temple of the Holy Spirit, which means that, you know, we need to find a way to deal with it from a different dimension, from a different realm. We can do so by kindness, as the pastor has pointed out. We can do so by joining others. But here's the thing. Let's, let's, let's say this. You learned, and I'm going to remind you, you learned all throughout my te the teachings I've been giving that our voices are vital for the tuning of the environment. So, which means your voice carries a frequency that decides what happens in the universe. So, it is you as a human being, you are the only one in this world that carries the life force of all the worlds that exist and of all the worlds that's coming. This thing is an aberration against human body. So since you carry this as a believer, you can then draw from that 
in this time. You know? Okay, this does not mean that, you know, oh, that, that somehow, you know, you, you should be affected by everything that happens to the earth. No, you shouldn't. You should actually determine the other way. You, in fact, by the way God made you and gave you a soul are the frequency that gives life to the earth. Even unbelievers have that same frequency in them. If they focus on life, they can create life. The only problem is that the fall keeps them from creating life that leads to life. You are the one who carries the capacity to create life that leads to life. Okay? Every limb in your body, every limb in your body that you carry right now, is, is directed by divine by a divine birth din. That means there are three principles guiding every organ in your body, which means there is a there is a movement of yourself, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in every organ of your body. So let's begin by saying this. How do we do this? We begin, like I've taught you before, the yod heh vav -Hey. The reason why I started teaching the yod heh vav -Hey, when I put it in public to do it, was because I began to see that people don't know how to protect themselves. They don't have the frequencies. They have it, but they don't know how to use it. So we use the name of yod heh -Vav -Hey as what? As a what? A protective device. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run into it, and they are protected. By the name of the Lord. It's only by the name that you can run into, run overrun a troop, tear down a wall, break break barriers move so first thing you need to do i want to say it again this is the time to practice this yod he vav he yod he vav he creating the frequency of the name of the lord around you yod he shin vav he creating the frequency of the name of the messiah around you then the whole beast creating the frequency of rulership by going lion, ox, eagle around you. Then creating the elemental principle, fire, you know, water, fire, ether, and wind. Let me explain to you why this is important. There are three things you do there, even though they are physical beings, physical things, that you do in that elemental structure that are actually the things we know those destroy this disease now. You do water, fire, earth, wind. Where there is clear air, this thing is destroyed. But now you are, you are using the elemental structures to create around yourself a covering, a protection. You know? So you use the name of, the, of Yao, of Yodhe Vave. This, the, 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 the unifying name, you use the name of the Messiah, then you use the name of the beings that God has created on earth to rule, which are also manifested in the throne room of God. Then you use the elemental structure, which destroy diseases. They all destroy diseases. They have the capacity to bring diseases down. You have this frequency. Then, of course, as a believer, and as a believer, who believes in the Trinity, you use the name, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and what, and engage them from the unity of your being in order to create this pyramidical structure that covers and protects you. Within the context of that, you now begin to speak of the kingdom of God. What is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God brings all the things that we read that happens in the New Jerusalem. So if you start this, and I'm going to do this openly today. You, if, you, if, you, if you cover yourself with that, then you engage the name of God. This is why we teach Adonai Koha Ares, Adonai Koha Beria, Adonai Koha Olam. You know, that this God, this Lord we serve, the frequency of the name tunes our, and our, our, our environment around us by the frequency of the name of God. Then you raise the idea of the angelic structures that rule creation. You know, you raise all of that. You raise the cherubs, because that's what you're doing. This is a cherubic 
what? This is a cherubic structure. Your, this is your, your structure of transmutation and transformation that where you stand in the center and your being is saturated by this force that of the name of God, of the name of his Messiah, of the name of his being. You sit in there and you dig now, now when you are in there with your voice, you begin to speak and call upon the Lord and decree and declare what you want. You do not tell the Lord to go heal, to go and destroy disease, such and such a disease. You tell the Lord to heal. You tell him what you want, what you desire. You speak health. You speak positively. I'm not going to say I knew exactly what was going to happen because I didn't. All I know is that I knew something was going to happen when we were going to need to do this. I didn't know COVID-19 was coming. I'm sorry, people will tell you all kinds of stuff. No, nobody knew it was coming, right? But there was something the Lord kept telling me, teach my people how to protect themselves. Teach my people to develop a frequency that allows them to stay safe when things happen on earth. That's one part of doing this. So, but remember that in the context of this pyramid that you create, this thing I've taught you to do, you engage the blood of Jesus Christ. Remember the blood of Jesus Christ has frequency. Its frequency is the frequency of life that upholds everything that is alive in creation. Remember that when you are in the context that the blood of Jesus Christ is divine fire, is divine light, engage it like you've never done before. Engage the life of Christ like you've never done before. This is one structure, okay? You do that and from in there you make your decree and declaration. Remember, I taught, those of you listening to me, you've heard me say this. You make your decrees and declaration from within the pyramidal structure. You, you, bring, you can bring anybody you want into that structure. You can change things by being in that structure because you are standing in the name of God. You can then say whatever other name you want to because every name of God has a powerful frequency that tunes the environment. You have what it takes to survive this. <laughs> so the second thing that I've taught some of my students is I've taught them how to move in the blood, <laughs> how to plant in the blood, how to go back to the beginning before creation, how to go back to the foundation before creation and to engage the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world so that you are out of this world and your mind is out of this realm and you're speaking from the other realm into this realm. This is where, okay, let's, let's talk about what's, what, 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 what's been written now. We now know by people talking that the 5G and the satellites that have been blanketing the earth, all right, we know many people are writing about it, scientists are talking about it, is affecting the earth, which means that you can either be here and speak, it, it, you can do it anywhere, but maybe one of the best ways you should is to move above the heavens, is to go over this thing. Only those who dwell in the heavenly place, only those who understand how to move their soul, how to move with the spirit into other realms, into things outside the earth, can affect the earth in healing now. So what we do with this then, is our voice must also become tuned to the frequency of healing. Go read the book of Jude again. Keep yourself in the love of God, right? I, in in um in uh, this thing in the in the journal of manifestation, one of the things that made me do that really is I wanted to reveal to people how to actually operate and manifest what they want. It doesn't change. That now is the time to practice to prove that what you've been learning and what God has taught you individually and what you've learned from us is actually. Uh, um, is effective. So let's try this. So that's one. Using the pyramid is one thing. All right? Using the pyramid is one thing. But using the angelic structures, which you have been taught, remember angels are what? They are energetic systems. What is killing us now are what? 
a false and energetic system created by fallen man, which cannot, which never causes life, and when it causes life, it always causes death. That's what's killing us. So those who have the frequency of life, the fragrance of life, as Paul will call it, must now begin to speak. So the first thing is practice this pyramidical structure. Bring in your mind, bring your whole family into it. Move in the name of yod heh Move in the name of yod heh shin And move with the, well, with the structure of the cherubim because the earth is cherubic in nature. You are a cherubic being. Move, move in the faces of the ruling beings or the ruling beasts and, and, and being that, that God placed upon the earth, move in the structure of the elemental principles. They all have frequencies that are disease destroying, that are death destroying, that actually are, are renewing of the human body. Right now, right now, brothers and sisters, if you use communion and the blood of Jesus and the name of Christ and you call upon his name and you do it effectively, you can stay safe because this is about frequencies. This is about fragrances. This is about movement. And let's come back to another thing. How did God create the world again? Simple stuff, right? God created the world by what? By the word. And it is by the power of his word that he sustains the universe. So Christ became man as the word became human. So why did the word become human? Why did the word become human? The word became human or became a body. Let's call it a body. Became, became sex. Kai, hologos, sex, agenito. The reason the word became flesh or became a body is so that the frequency of the word can be returned in its proper healing processes in the body of a, in, the, in the human body. So when Christ resurrected, he restored the capacity of man who is repented, man who, is, who has come to know God. Even the unbelievers now have the capacity to create stuff which they never had before Christ came. Before there was a consciousness of the presence of God in creation the way it was in Jesus. So that body which you are part of, that body which you, which, which, which you live in now, that body that the Holy Spirit has connected you with, that body has a frequency of life. It has a frequency of healing. It has a frequency of grace. So let's talk about it again. So which means that we need to begin to work from what is a frequency? A frequency is a mode, is a, is a mode of, 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 of communication, if you may, but it's also a mode of being. So in this particular time, how do you use the frequency of gratitude? How do you use the frequency of joy? So within the context of the pyramidical structure, bring those frequencies within. Nothing, nothing in this world is more powerful than having positive frequencies and carrying those frequencies and releasing them from your being through the person of Christ, through God, through the Holy Spirit. Nothing is more powerful than that. So when God created you, created Adam, what did he do? He did not put death in Adam. He put the life of the worlds in Adam. So one of the things that's happening when we blanket the universe with negativity or we blanket it with human desire for death, what we do is we affect the way that the human body is supposed to act. Brothers and sisters, remember that your body even in its natural, even in its fallen state, still has an interconnection with the universe. If your heart and your mind and your thought and your mental structures, all your imagination, if your heart, your mind, and your language are attuned to the right frequency, there's nothing you cannot bring healing to. You can bring healing to anything. You can bring healing to your dog. You can bring healing to your dove. You can bring healing to your, 
your bird, whatever is around you, your plants, especially to your body and to the people around you. One of the things that have happened now is that the frequency of fear has invaded human consciousness. So how do we deal with it? By bringing out a different frequency. Let there be light. Let's talk like our Father. Let's speak like our God. Let's speak resurrection to the world. Let's speak healing to the world. Let's say we live. We shall not die. Let's say the world will survive. The earth will be healed. And something else we can do is to go up into the, into the realm of the spirit and begin to go up into the realm of the, of, of the heavens and begin to destroy whatever is causing this. Even if it means it sets humanity back technologically a few decades or a few hundred years. Humanity must survive and come to the point of health and strength. We need human beings to live so that they can come to know the Lord. We who have come to know the Lord must then shift and operate in a way to protect God's earth until man comes to know God. So now, let's, let's, let's look at this again, okay? With all the powers that are in you, all the powers that are in you, which I cannot begin to enumerate, let me just summarize it by saying, with all the power of God that is in you, all, God didn't give you partial power. With all the power God gave you to rule this earth and to use this earth as a place to bring forth frequencies that transforms creation. With all the power God gave you and the way he has arranged your life, okay, you can impact and cause a cascading effect of the mercy, of the life, of the grace, of the power of God into creation, into the sun. They are now trying to tune the sun to hurt man. You know, whoever is doing that, you have the power to redirect the energetic system of the sun. They are now using the moon. You have the capacity to redirect the, the, the energy of the moon. This is one of the things that Jews do that is so amazing. They, they, they direct the energy of the moon, every new moon towards praise. Every morning they say, you, you created the sun to rule the day. Every day, that, that language, and it's a language of praise, a language of joy that comes out of their mouth. Even when a Jew is sick, he still says, blessed are you, O Lord God, who did what? Who heals all flesh. You should be in the same mode, speaking that way. Now, the second thing that, something I just taught you recently, I told you, engage the angelic structure. Stand with them since they are energetic system and they are energetic systems of positive life because they serve Yahweh. They serve the Lord Jesus Christ. They were created to give you help. So there are different sounds. You know, remember when we were talking, some of you don't know because you have not come to the meditation. Ah. A E O U five, which is the principle of multiplication. So your vowels that are in your writing, your vowels that are in your writing are sounds when combined with the name of the Holy One that produces life, because it is still the principle of the multiplication of life. When God said, "Be fruitful and multiply," there was no death there. It is meant to represent the multiplication of life, which is what your palm is. That's why the angels hold you up in their palm, according to Psalm 91. Now, since you are the incorporation of all the goodwill of God, the intention of divinity, since this is who you are, Remember, as man, you are the only one who has been given the choice to direct yourself and the world according to your desire. Say again. 
because you are the summative principle of the universe, because God has granted his authority, his being to you. You are the only being in creation, okay? You are the only one giving the choice to direct and push the world, if you may, the world, the universe, and yourself as you desire. My things with you is, okay, let me, let me put this down for a second. Okay, now, listen. If you, if you understand <laughs> that you are a box, not a box, I don't know how to put it, but you're a conjunction of divine frequencies. Then your whole life is a mental construct of linguistic, psychological, pneumatic movement. So which means there are spiritual frequencies, psychic frequencies, linguistic frequencies, all intertwined. They are all based on language. Like I told you before, the universe is a linguistic construct. How you talk, how you speak, how you think, how you imagine affects the universe where you are. If we can train ourselves to imagine a world without COVID-19, I said I wasn't going to say the name, but I'm saying it now. If we can think of the world without it, we know it's here. The danger is always to focus on what is. Do you notice that the more we focus on it, the more it increases around us? What if we found a space of health and we place the frequency of the health, the thought of health in the whole atmosphere? We place a mental construct of what health is. We should be able to do that. If we continue to operate in the kind of fear that we're operating now, it's going to make this stuff worse. Believers must not be bought and must not be caught up in the same kind of language. So, what is my thoughts? I interconnect with all of humanity through the person of Jesus Christ, and I speak healing. It flows through me. I'm not the only one. You're over there in the U.S., and I'm connected to you, which means that our interconnectivity creates a greater vibrational frequency for health. We must come away from the fear and create the frequency of joy. Oh, by the way, it wasn't until a few days ago that I understood that whatever is happening, that removing believers and religious people from gathering together was one of the first coup, but they don't understand that it's not a coup, that we are not bound by, 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 by location, you know? But the, the goal, from what I understand, was to make sure religious people are not in the same place, singing their frequencies and changing the atmosphere. Even if it's a terrible, even if it's not a religion that does anything, just because it is focused on life and positivity, it tends to change the atmosphere. But we are different. We are different. We can, in fact, affect the world without coming together physically because we are spirits. And spirits cannot be bound by doors. They cannot be bound by, by circumstances. All right. So remember what I taught two Sundays ago. The, the angels are frequencies. They are structures. They are energetic frequencies that come from the from the deep mind of God. As you speak each one of them, you're releasing the frequencies of life, what they carry into your atmosphere. But the great frequency is the name of Yeshua. Cover yourself with the name. What does the Bible say we, we wrestle against? What does it say? What's our warfare? 
For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of what? Strongholds, casting down imaginations. <laughs> huh? Taking captivity every, and every thought that <laughs> exalts itself. Exalt itself. Again, uh, above the knowledge of Christ or against it. It means it's a war of frequencies. It's not a war of physical objects. It's an information war. But the information may not even just be the physical information they give. It's a mental information war. So if we raise our frequencies and we speak with the voice of God, then the voice of the God of, of the of, of, of God or the voice of the Lord that we express will become mightier than the destructive war or the destructive waters that are flowing from the media and everybody else who wants to tell us how terrible this is. It is terrible, but we must rise above it and speak life to it. We must become, we must be the spiritual people that recalibrate the environment. Sons of God, arise. Our body carries the frequency of the resurrection, which means it carries the frequency of healing. Our voice carries the frequency of the one that lives in us, which means it carries the frequency of God. Our thought, when it is the thought of Christ, carries the frequency of divine creation. You can do this. You should start saying to yourself, I am alive. I carry life. It is possible for me to live. I am alive. I am an embodiment of life. I carry life. I live. You speak, speak those things into yourself. When you hear all this negativity, spend 10, 15 minutes Speaking a different thing to, your, to yourself and to your atmosphere. The Lord is with you. His name is around you. Your physical body is saturated by the Holy Spirit. Every cell of your body, now that you're a believer, carries the frequency of God. Viruses, whatever, can be destroyed by certain frequencies, carry the frequency of joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. The universe is what? A linguistic construct. Okay? And language influences psychogenetic structures. <laughs> Use the language. If you don't know any other stuff to do, just speak joy, speak strength. Be like David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. And, and Pastor talked about the, 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 the incense. Your voice, your voice, your prayer, the New Testament describes it the same way. Your prayer is an incense. So it does all the stuff that the rabbi says it does. Your voice does the same thing that the incense does in the temple. Brothers and sisters, this is our time to come together and reveal who we are. Things are happening all around the world. Sons of God are arising. Interconnect in your mind. The Lord loves you. I love you. I miss you. So we, what we're going to do is we're going to have communion. And after communion, we're going to give you time to give because even though we are not gathering physically, we st there are still people with need. There are still people that need to be ministered to. And the pastor still needs to go places sometimes when he's, she's called to pray for people or talk to them. You know, I don't know how she does it. Or go to the office and from there speak so people can have confidence that she's thinking about them. She still drives like she drove to church today, you know, and she's constantly studying to minister to us. The Lord bless you. Let's turn around and let's have the communion, you know. We're going to do this. I'm going to stand, so please, 
I just want to warn the people that are doing the video that I'm going to stand so they don't get all discombobulated. Okay? We are going to we are going to begin everybody stand. We're going to do the Yod Hey Vav Hey and we're going to do the whole 72 principles. We're going to do the stuff for our for us. So you're facing me, you know, and we're going to go Yod to the right. Take a deep breath. Out. Again, in, out. Can you see me? Breathe, out. Now go with me. Hey, 
Man is the one being affected now. Man, lion, ox, ego. Man, lion, ox, ego. Man, lion, ox, ego. Man, lion, ox. Ego now stand. Konga da da ba she da 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 ba banda da da ba she de 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 ba kuriya ki de de bo shondo ro ro bo sha el karo ro bo shi ana ra ma ma ra dolo ro bo shi na ra ma 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 la nda la da ba sha ele bro ko ke de de ba 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 la da ba ke de de ko shi kono ro ma 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 na ele bro ba ba ka da ba shi ke de de bo shi ko take a deep breath because it's amazing to water water engage fire. Engage earth, engage wind, engage what? Fire, earth, wind, what? Fire, earth, wind, what? Fire, earth. We stay. Oh yeah, da 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 ba 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 la da ba. She de 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 ba ba. Kuri endele bo bro rokos. She de 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 ba. Kuri endala mas. Kuri endele de bo. Shara ba da da. He da 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 ba. Kuri endele de bo. Shari endala da ba. Shara da da ba. He do da da ba 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 la da ba. She do ri endala da ba ba ba. Ya bo ba 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 da da. Kendele de bo. Shiri da ba ba da. Say with me, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in me. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in me. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, in me. Now, say Adonai, Adonai, call Haaretz, Adonai, call Haberia, Adonai, call Haolam. Adonai call Habasar. Say it again from the beginning. Adonai call Haaretz. Adonai call Haberia. Adonai call Haolam. Adonai call Habasar. Uriel, say with me. Uriel. Uriel. Oh yeah. Mm. Stay with me. Allow your pyramid and your structure to become. Feel the energetic system all around you moving. Come on, open yourself up. Fire, water, everything is moving around you. Caribbean, engage the Caribbean. Mm. Mm. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. Yours is the kingdom. Forever and ever. Come, kingdom of God. It is your will, Father, that we prosper and be in good health. Our soul prospers. Oh, now engage the blood of Jesus with me. Mm, blood of Jesus. Blood of Jesus. 
The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of the Lamb. Blood of the Those of you who remember, it's time to begin from the bottom. This is what you do. Create the energetic system. Come on, take your hands like that. Start from the bottom. Go. Bring it to the center. I'll bring it to the right. To the left. To the center of your navel. Just move it, move it. Mm. Mm. To your right, to your left, back to your right, to your left, back to your right, bring it up to your shoulder, move it to your left, bring it up to your head. First, move it second place. Move it third place. Up. Start it again. Second. Third. Head. Mm, left. Right. Down. Mm, left. Center. Right. This side. This side. Down. Raise it up. Hands in the shin position. In the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Now I want you to take the communion. Let's begin. Oh, Rabba Baba Shindi Lirebo Sori Ondororobo. We're taking it within the context of the kingdom of God. He took the bread mm, and he broke it and he gave thanks. Blessed are you, O Lord God, King of the universe, who gives bread to the eater, who gave bread to our fathers in the wilderness, who feeds all creation, but who sends the bread from heaven? For he said, I am that bread that came from heaven which is our Lord Jesus Christ. Ah, blah, 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 blah. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for coming into the world. Thank you for coming as us. Come, thank you for taking us in your body and redeeming us. Father, as we take this communion, we engage again the frequency of your body. We engage the power of your body and we receive the life of your body. We take on your immortality, your complete and total healing. For there is no sickness there, and there is no tears there. There is no disappointment or sorrow. We receive life from your body. You broke the bread and you said, do this in remembrance of me. Lord, we take this in an amnesis. Let your body be reconstituted in our body and let our body become one with yours the body of Christ. That same night he took the cup and he gave thanks. Mm, hallelujah. Took the cup and he gave thanks. Said, this is my blood which was shed for you. Then he said, this is my blood which was shed for the remission of the sins of many. As often as you do this, you do show my death till I come. I believe that the coming he was talking about was not just the second coming. It was a reference to the resurrection. And whenever we take the body and the blood, we come out on the other side resurrected. Our sins are forgiven. Our bodies are healed. We enact and manifest the resurrection. We, when we engage immortality and our body and our cells take on 
the immortality of Christ becomes light. That is the manifestation of immortality. We are one with Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all our sins. Father, whatever we've done, whatever our sins, whatever our failures, we engage the blood of Jesus Christ for the cleansing. Father, we take this not just for ourselves, we take it for this earth that you've given to us. We remind the earth, we remind you, O earth, that the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ dropped upon you. Now, O earth, react and respond to that blood that brought you salvation, that brought you healing, that healed the sons of Adam, the children of Adam. Now, O earth, remember the dropping and the dripping of the blood of he that died on Calvary. Remember and come back to yourself. Remember and cast off every bondage. Remember and destroy the power and rays of death. Step into the glory of the Lord as it is written, the whole earth, the whole earth, it is your earth, the whole earth shall be covered, covered, be filled with the glory of Yahweh as the waters covers the earth. And Christ is the glory of the Father. We are the glory of the Father. You, O earth, respond to healing. O atmosphere, respond. We take this, and through our being, the frequency of the life of God invades every corner of this earth. We speak light to the darkest area. We speak healing to wherever the disease or sickness is strongly present. We receive life into our own body. We become life through Jesus Christ. Amen. There is healing in the blood of the Lamb. There is healing in the blood of the Lamb. There is healing in the blood of the Lamb. To make the wounded whole. Come on, everywhere where you are. In the blood of the Lamb. There is healing. In the blood of the Lamb. There is healing. In the blood of the Lamb. To make the wounds at In the blood of the Lamb, there is cleansing. In the blood of the Lamb, there is cleansing. In the blood of the Lamb, to set the sinners free. Hallelujah. So, right now, Pastor told me before I started speaking, that I need to remind you, and I'm reminding you, because this is our obligation to the body of Christ, to the people of God. So we are going to take offering. Whatever your offering is, raise it to the Lord, because we are not separated. We are separated by, by physical process, but we are not separated. We are not isolated from each other. The work of the kingdom doesn't stop. I do have so much testimonies to give you guys when the time is right. We are giving here as we are. We give to those on the street. We give. And every time we give, I notice that when we give, I come back, I get a different kind of news. Uh, it is, it's, I mean, I've been watching, you know, uh, Ron's been carrying coins to give to people. And every time we walk, and come back, there's a good news for us. So I'm encouraging you not to stop your giving. Remember, you know, this is a spiritual thing. 
by giving, you are also continuously connecting yourself to what? To the, to the, to the gift that God gave to the world. But you're also giving the church opportunity to continue to minister to people in such a way you're connecting to the heart of God through your prayer, through your giving. Your giving is just as transformative. This is the thing. A giving is a misvote. A misvote is transformative. One misvote can change a whole generation. So when you give, remember you're connecting to the body of Christ all over the world. There are believers doing work right now and even going to places and ministering to people. I just read of a believer the other day who still takes food to people. They tried to stop him. He said, I'm not going to stop taking food to people. He said, because there are people who are dying of hunger right now in their houses. So, and, and, and as you give, when people call, part of this stuff goes to help people goes to support again the ministry and so then when we come back in a couple of weeks the church is still taken care of amen so please we're going to we're going to raise it as a communion as as a as a worship to the lord i'm going to go i think uh, we're going to go online and i'm going to give also online so take the stuff the lord bless your offering the lord bless you you have already presented your life this gift is your life your life is not taken for granted. You are influencing the whole world. We bless your life. We bless your bread. We bless your water. We bless your heart. We bless your family. You will live. You will flow in joy. You will flow in grace. You will flow in power. You will flow in wealth. This is going to result in the shifting of wealth. And you are going to stand when the water breaks and the waters of God comes through to this, to this earth. The, the, the thing you need to know is you're being blessed. Anything you do now, you're doing for the kingdom of God. Get yourself ready to be part of the new breed of those who control the wealth of the world. It is coming and it is here now. May the Lord bless your giving. May the Lord bless your, your bread and your water. May he cause you to receive from yes, a place of rest in the name of oh, Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Wow. Awesome. I can feel the connection with all of you. I know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, you see how my studio is? You guys see how beautiful my studio is? I see you waiting. <laughs> I even have all the elders bowing down with me in the back. <laughs> and I have a whole pot of uh, wine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it is been, it's, we, it's so good to be a believer. Because one could be depressed, one could be operating in a place of fear, but we have life we have light we have glory yeah. we yeah. are living in immortality yes yeah. remember creation is a linguistic construct don't let them change your language use your language mm -hmm. to create as your father creates that's why i want to remind you of the this thing of the journal go through the journal and begin to repeat remember the frequencies that i've been teaching you mm -hmm. oh by the way this disease is a frequency disease. So you know that. It's a frequency disease. So the body, mm -hmm. the body is responding to a specific frequency that has been released upon the face of the earth. So now it's time for you. To, what we've just done is we've created a different kind of frequency. Do this every day. Do not allow yourself to fall short. Speak in tongues. Tongues is a frequency that deals and transforms the environment. These things cannot live in a truly spiritual environment. So go ahead and be a son as you're supposed to be. Practice living your body. Practice going into the atmosphere. Practice going there and sending some, some debris to destroy some of the stuff they are putting up there. Don't tell them I said so. Yeah. Let's pray. <laughs> Receive. <laughs> The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you.
The Lord caused his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance mm. upon you and be gracious unto you. Yes. Hey, hey, hey. Oh. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the only true God, give you, give you peace. Shalom. In the name of Yeshua. Amen. Amen.